Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about category and collection page optimization, specifically for e-commerce brands. All right. So whenever people ask me what the secret is to great SEO, I always tell them there aren't really any big secrets. Of course, there are tactics that people keep to themselves. Everyone has some, I even have a few of my own, but those hidden methods aren't the same ones we use to scale organic revenue for six, seven and eight figure e-com brands. All right. It can really be simplified into three things for e-com SEO a sound technical foundation, on-page strategy, and plenty of links. Of course, you can nitpick at any of these things, but you get the idea, right? Everything can really be thrown into those three buckets. But the truth is, there is a one particular secret in e-com that a lot of brands and new SEOs get right, specifically about e-commerce SEO. And I'm not ashamed to admit that it took me several months until I learned of it myself. Ready for it? Ranking your category pages instead of your product pages. Almost seems too simple, right? and maybe even a little bit backwards. Well, it may seem those things, but I'm telling you it works and it's time to find out why and how to do it. So sticking with the theme of three, we're gonna break down category page optimization into three parts, okay? The first part, collections over products, the logic behind why it works and why you should do it. Number two, basic category level optimizations, setting up your page design and content for success. And number three, advanced category page optimizations, internal links, sub sub collections, and customer reviews. So before we go any further, I want to make one thing clear. When I say the words collections or categories, I'm referring to the same type of page. We primarily work with Shopify brands. And as many of you know, the Shopify CMS refer refers to category level pages as collections. But if you work in another CMS like Squarespace or WordPress, they're often just called categories. Okay. Regardless of what you call them, they're the same, okay? A group of similar products usually denoted in the URL structure as something like yourdomain.com slash collections slash collection name, or maybe another URL structure like .com slash product dash category slash category name, or maybe even .com slash, you know, categories slash whatever your category name is, all right? So starting things off with collections over products. So... You might be still asking yourself, why would I want to rank my category pages instead of my product pages? Fair question. I actually asked the same thing myself a couple years ago when I learned about this. Why on earth would I try to rank a category page when customers have to visit the product page in order to buy something? Well, there's a couple of reasons why you want to prioritize the collection pages over the product pages. And while some are more technical than others, I prefer to start with the simplest one. Think about the last time you shopped on Amazon, assuming you've done so. If not, Think about the last time you stepped into a new storefront, okay? Let's say in both cases, you're searching for men's black hoodies. So if you type men's black hoodies into Amazon, you'll receive the following results, depending on where you live and obviously if you set filters, anything like that. This is literally a screenshot of the top 10 results um, on Amazon when you search men's black hoodies, okay? What do you see? Well, for starters, Amazon doesn't take you directly to a product page with a black hoodie on it. Nope. It gives you thousands of men's black hoodies to look at. I think there were 10,000 results in this particular search. And they're all different, right? Different brands, different price points, different materials, pullover versus zipper, plenty other variations, right? Okay. Now, let's say you've never shopped on Amazon. Let's say you walk into the Nike factory store and you ask one of the employees, where can I find the black hoodies for men? Okay. They'll either walk you over to the section or gesture in that general direction, depending on the mood they're in. And when you get over there, do you think you'll be staring at a single black hoodie? Knowing Nike's massive product, product catalog, which is in the hundreds of thousands, it's very unlikely, okay? There's no way they're gonna stock one men's black hoodie. There's probably gonna be a handful to choose from, again, at different price points, different designs, and other variations, okay? You see what I'm getting at here? In both cases, you are given options rather than a singular product. 99% of users aren't sure exactly which men's black hoodie they're going to buy when they open their browser or step into a storefront. They just know that they want one and they'll make a decision based on the options they're given at the time, or they'll go to another website or maybe go to another storefront if they're shopping. Okay. That's the simple non SEO way of why collection pages are better to rank than product pages. Okay. Case in point, just look at what Amazon's doing right now for the SEO reasoning. Unless your product recently went viral, let's say, you know, TikTok, or you spend a ton on meta ads or YouTube ads or something like that, or maybe you have a really good uh, PR team, whatever the case may be, it is generally considered unnatural for a product page to receive quality backlinks. 
In fact, that is why Google ignores most backlinks that point to product pages. Google sees these as sponsored or promotional type links and does not bother passing page rank through these links. Okay. So new to SEO or you've been doing it for a while and you've spent hundreds or thousands of dollars building backlinks to product pages. I have bad news for you. They're useless. Now, the exception being maybe you have a really good PR team and they're building no follow links. Sure. Those are still valuable to a degree, but I do have good news. Google does not tend to ignore backlinks built to collection or category pages. Now, the one caveat to this is if you build a ton of them and they're, you know, the other results in the SERP don't have a ton of backlinks, then you will stick out like a sore thumb and you'll likely hurt your performance. Okay. Anyway, why does Google not ignore collection pages? Well, these pages are actually useful to users. They have options to choose from. And again, SEO is ultimately about creating a great user experience. So between Amazon and brick and mortar stores, normalizing option-based shopping and two, Google ignoring backlinks to product pages, it should be pretty clear that category pages are the money pages that you'll need to prioritize if you want to scale your e-commerce brand. Okay. So now that you've got that, how do you do it? Okay. So basic category page optimizations. Let's take everything we've just talked about and translate it to your DTC store. I'm going to stick with the men's black hoodie example to keep things simple. So unless they're intimately familiar with your brand, and I'm talking like family member, close friend, girlfriend, boyfriend, or loyal customer, 99% of your customers or potential customers will not find your brand organically by searching for something like your brand plus specific product name. Okay. Let's say you sell a men's black hoodie and you decide to name it dark side. Okay. Let's also assume that it has some sort of graphic on it. So for the sake of this conversation at its core, it is a men's graphic black hoodie. Okay. Bear with me here. This is just an example, especially if you are a new brand, right? If you're Supreme or some massive fashion brand that sells hoodies, maybe someone will search for that. Okay. But if you are a new brand, I promise you, no one is going to search for your brand plus dark side. Hoodie. Okay. The exceptions to this are if they already know about it, like they recently saw a meta TikTok or YouTube ad about it. Or as I said a second ago, they're intimately familiar with your brand. Okay. But just to reiterate, nobody is going to open their browser and just randomly type the words your brand plus specific product name. No. One. Okay. Again, unless you are Supreme or Patagonia or something like that. Okay. So how do you get people to discover this product organically via Google search? Well, assuming it's not the only black graphic graphic hoodie you sell for men, it's actually pretty simple. Throw all of your graphic black hoodies into a collection or category and name it men's black graphic hoodie. Okay. If you're on Shopify or even in WordPress, if you name the category or collection page that, that takes care of your H1 in most cases. Okay. So your H1 for this collection is now optimized for the target keyword men's black graphic hoodie, which gets 60 searches a month in the United States. This is not a high volume keyword. You know, you may be like, wow, that's not enough. However, it's far easier than ranking for men's black hoodie or just men's hoodie. And because someone is already so certain they want a men's black graphic hoodie, you can be sure they're far closer to the bottom of the funnel than someone just searching for men's hoodie. Okay. They are specific. They specifically know what they want. And that is a black one that has a graphic on it. Okay. So it has major purchase intent. People are ready to buy. So even if it's only 60 a month and you're in, let's say the number one spot, you're still going to make a handful of sales per month. Okay. So you've got the H1 taken care of before we get on to meta title description, things like that. Let's start with the design of the page. Okay. This is the same layout that we use for every econ brand we work with minus a few subtle variations based on the brand. Okay. And this is the same design I recommend you use. Okay. You have your main menu up top then the H1, which is the target keyword. In this case, it's men's black graphic hoodie. Okay. Then you have a 200 to 300 word short category description. It should include the target keyword in the first sentence and introduce the primary benefits slash features slash unique selling points of the category. Okay. Now I know what you're thinking, especially if you work in Shopify, um, the collection description, if you want to add two to 300 words, it doesn't always look great at the top. That is why it is so short. You'll also notice we have five to 600 words below. Okay. So two to 300 words at the top. I promise you, it will not affect your user experience that much. You are overthinking it. Okay. People prefer added context. They don't just want to stare at images. Okay. Now you have your product grid and then you also have 
five to 600 words at the bottom, right? The five to 600 words at the bottom, far more in depth, okay? You should include the target keyword. Um, you should use H2s and H3s as applicable. You can break down specific features of the category. So in this case, you know, your H2 could be something like the materials you use, or, you know, maybe it's a performance type hoodie for sports or working out. Why is it good for that, right? All of these different things that speak to why this is such a good product and also that makes it search centric, okay? So again, it looks like a lot, right? You know, why do I need 700 to 800 words or 700, 900 words for a category? Amazon doesn't have it, right? Why should I? Well, for starters, you're not Amazon. And though we did essentially not copy, but embody their idea of option-based shopping, you don't have nearly the same amount of authority and credibility as the as Amazon.com domain. So you have to give, give Google and users more context about your category page. This is what most category pages look like. I'm guessing if you're watching the video, it's probably what yours looks like too. You have the main menu, you have the target keyword. Some brands I've even seen remove the target keyword altogether. They just don't even have an H1 on page. Then there's a product grid, a footer menu. Okay. Aside from the H1, users and search engines have zero information about what's on the page. They just see a grid, they just see a grid of products, which is not very helpful. So if you thought removing words from your page was actually helping the user experience, you're wrong. By adding two to three hundred words above the product grid and an additional couple hundred words below it, we're able to give users and search engines more context about what they're actually looking at and shopping for. You can show Google that this particular category page is indeed about men's black graphic hoodies, and you can show users why they should buy yours. Cooler graphics, better materials, what have you, okay? The copy should be both search centric and conversion focused. Use related keywords in H2s and H3s when relevant, but also emotional words that convince customers to click on a product and add it to their cart, okay? So you've covered the title in the H1, the meta title, you need to also have your keyword there. It also should be in the meta description, even though that's not a direct ranking factor, it will be bolded if someone searches for it. You should front load it to the, uh, you should front load it as close to the beginning of the meta description as possible. It should also be in the URL slug, right? Dot com slash collections slash men's black graphic hoodies. It should also be in the image alt text, okay? Uh, that's as if you have a banner on the collection page. So for example, you know, I've seen some brands do Target keyword, banner image, and then short description. We've done that with a handful of brands, works out great. Just make sure to add a keyword to the alt text, okay? So just to reiterate, the one reason, or not the one reason, but the primary reason we're doing, we're adding content to the collection page is because if Google just has the meta title and the H1 to go off of, and then it just sees a list of products, it has no idea what it's ranking, right? It, it, it's a thin content page. So you need to add the words to give it more context and that way you will rank better and you will make more money. Okay, it's that simple. All right, now on to advanced category page optimization. So assuming you've taken care of that for all of your collections, now you're already ahead of 90% of your competitors. Most brands aren't doing this, right? Just as we pointed out a second ago, you probably didn't have this on your page until you watch this video, okay? But you're ahead of 90%, you don't wanna be in the top 10%, you wanna be in the top 1%. Okay, being on page one is not enough. You need to be in the number one, maybe number two spot. Okay, so we're gonna cover four other advanced techniques for optimizing your category pages. Those are sorting by customer reviews, building internal links to that category page, building internal links between similar categories and creating sub, sub collections. Okay, so let's start with number one, sorting by customer reviews. In my experience, most brands rarely think about how their products are displayed on the category page, opting for default sorting, which depend, depending on your CMS can, it's typically like just best sellers. Um, users on the other hand, um, constantly use the sort by functionality. I know for a fact when I shop, depending on what I'm looking for, I'm going to search for, or I'm going to sort by maybe lowest price or top rated, maybe highest price if I wanna filter things out, depends, right? Now, we have seen a lot of success by setting the category page to automatically sort by customer reviews, highest to lowest. This means that the highest rated, highest customer reviewed and rated products appear at the top of the category page, which users and Google seem to, seem to prefer, right? So though you'll have to do your own testing on your own brand, it has worked for several brands we work with. You could play around with lowest cost or best sellers first as well. 
it really depends on what you're selling. And ultimately you're gonna have to test to figure that out, right? If you are, for example, like the lowest price competitor in your space might be beneficial to sort by lowest cost first. Okay. Um, if you've got like two or three best sellers that account for like 80 to 90% of your sales, maybe you should do best sellers first. Okay. It all depends. Um, on to number two, building internal links to category pages. Okay. The internet is an ecosystem, of content and links. Great content will never see the light of day without links and great links don't matter. If the content is terrible. In the case of your category pages, let's break this down. Even if you have a perfectly optimized category page, which is subjective, it's useless without any links pointing towards it. Okay. In fact, if it's a collection or category page, it needs links from several locations, your main menu, your main menu, your footer menu, and relevant blog posts and supporting pages. Combined with proper on-page optimization, these links, assuming you use relevant anchor text on the blog content and other pages, will propel these category pages to page one of Google. Now, the reason they need to be in your main menu is because that tells Google that, okay, hey, this page is really important. A link from your main menu is like the top most importance you could give to a link, internal link on your website, okay? So it has to be there. Also the homepage, okay? Now, on number three, building internal links between similar categories. Let's stick with the men's black gra graphic hoodie example. I'm going to continue to assume for the sake of this example that you also sell other types of hoodies. Maybe that could be men's gray graphic hoodies, men's black zippered hoodies, men's plain black hoodies, okay? Now, users may start their search for men's black graphic hoodies, then they'll realize they're open to shopping for gray or zippered options. If you sell these types of hoodies, you should have collections for each of these keywords too. Within the five to 600 word in-depth description that is below your product grid at the bottom of that page for your men's black graphic hoodies collection page, you should build internal links to these other collections, right? So it could be as simple as like, um, want to check out our gray graphic hoodies and then link the gray graphic hoodies. And then it's a link to that collection page, right? And it's an adjacent page as far as the hierarchy is concerned. With that being said, you should also build similar links from those collections, like the gray one back to the black one, okay? It will improve the user experience and help Google better understand your site structure. Double win, okay? And lastly, number four, creating sub sub collections as I like to call them. I'm officially out of ideas with the men's black graphic hoodie brand. So I'm gonna use a new example for this final technique, okay? Let's say you sell laptops. Laptops is a pretty competitive word, keyword. 77,000 searches a month and an 81 difficulty according to Ahrefs uh, in the United States. You know what's less competitive? Laptops under $500, laptops for college students, laptops for digital nomads, laptops for video editors, okay? You can literally duplicate your main collection with the exact same laptops in it, then re-optimize it for those other keywords. I'm not kidding. If you only have three laptops on your site, you can duplicate that exact same category or collection as many times as you want, optimizing it for a new keyword each time. So instead of throwing all your eggs in one basket and trying to rank for, let's say, just laptops, which we just said was crazy competitive, you can instead have five to 10 different collections, all with the same products, all optimized for a different keyword. And now customers can potentially land on that category page from five to seven, five to 10 different keywords. More points of entry for the customers equals more likelihood of you making money. And just as with the similar collections, you can internally link between all of these to boost rankings and improve user experience, right? So let's say you're, you have a main category for laptops under $500, okay? Now $500, someone's on a budget. College students are consistently on a budget. So you could have an internal link from the $500 collection page to the college student laptop collection page, right? See what I'm doing there? And obviously vice versa. So. If you're ready to print some money with your e brand, implement these tactics and let me know how they pay off in the comments. Till next time.